Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Vote in the poll for the character you want to see next, and like and subscribe for a less tragic backstory. Maybe. Today we'll be building Westeros' deadliest orphan, Arya Stark. Created by George R.R. Martin in 1996, Arya is a girl who can't catch a break. But much like Santa Claus, she's making a list and brutally killing everyone on it. Darkness. We'll start off by setting our goals for this build. First, we'll need to work on our sewing skills, which is a nice way of saying stabbing things repeatedly with a needle. Next, we'll learn what we can from a group of assassin death worshippers. Finally, we'll work on getting some faces we can put on for parties and other special occasions. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll if you want, just make sure you hit the multi-classing minimums. Dexterity's number one, it's for stealth and sword play. Next up, Charisma. She's pretty good at convincing people not to harm her and getting in close enough to harm them. Wisdom after that, animals take to her and her miserable teen years have made her cynically insightful. Constitution next, she's enduring emotional and physical trauma at a pretty consistent rate. Strength is on the lower end, but someone hiking as often as she does isn't weak, and we're dumping intelligence. Her formal education was interrupted by the Lannisters, and she wasn't exactly studious before that. Arya is a human, and variant humans tend to favor better in harsh worlds. The defensive duelist feat will let you add your proficiency modifier to your AC as a reaction. You can raise your dex and wisdom by one. Take stealth as your skill of choice. We'll customize a background for animal handling and deception, along with the position of privilege from the noble background. That lets you gain audience with other nobility, but no guarantees on how that meeting's gonna go. For first level, we'll go with Fighter. Take Perception and Survival. They'll be helpful when you're on your own. For your fighting style, Dueling is ideal for Needle as it adds 2 to your damage when you're using a one-handed weapon. You also get Second Wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your Fighter level as a bonus action. For second level, stick to Fighter for Action Surge. It lets you take an extra action once per long rest. At third level, you can take a Martial Archetype, and I'm going to say this is where the Hound takes over your training. The Brute Archetype is from an Unearthed Arcana, meaning you can Google it, whenever you like. You get Brute Force, which lets you add 1d4 to your damage when you attack with a weapon you have proficiency with. I'm not sure why that's stipulated, as fighters have proficiency with all weapons, but whatever. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement or a feat. For now, we'll take the ability score improvement, bump up your dexterity for more stabby damage. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one. And considering your weapon is pretty light, you should be able to land a couple of attacks. At this point, Arya has made her way to Bravos and began her descent into Roguehood. When you multi-class as Rogue, you can take one extra skill from their list, go for Insight. Your life has been pretty awful thus far, and Cynicism is a healthy response. You also get Expertise in two skills of your choice, Deception and Stealth seem to be good options. Finally, you get Sneak Attack, which adds 1d6 to your damage when you have the advantage on an enemy, or if you have an ally within 5 feet of said enemy. You can only do this once per round, so it doesn't stack with the extra attacks. Second level of Rogues get Cunning Action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action so you can get out of melee range in case someone on your list could crush your skull with their bare hands. Third level rogues get to choose a roguish archetype. The assassin archetype fits Arya perfectly. You get proficiency with disguise kits and poisoner's kits. You also get assassinate that gives you advantage on creatures who haven't acted in initiative yet. And you crit on any creature that is surprised. With an extra 2d6 sneak attack damage, you're dealing 2d8 plus 2d4 plus 2d6 plus 6 when you sneak up on someone with needles, so you can cross someone off your list pretty quickly. If you're willing to do the math. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement or a feat. The actor feat gives you plus one charisma and advantage on deception and performance checks when you're pretending to be someone else. You can also mimic their speech if you've listened to them for one minute. A successful insight check for whoever is listening can see through this, but that check is contested by your deception, to which you get plus eight and advantage, so I wouldn't worry about it. With that, I think we'll have proven ourselves to the many-faced god, giving us a level in Cleric. Specifically a Trickery Domain Cleric, they get Blessings of the Trickster, which gives a creature you touch advantage on stealth checks for an hour. For spells, your domain gives you Charm Person, which forces a Wisdom save of 8 plus your Proficiency plus your Wisdom modifier on a creature, or charms them for one hour. Disguise Self gives you access to a box of faces that you can use to make yourself look like another person for one hour. You can only change your height by one foot and can't add any extra limbs, seeing through this requires an investigation check against your spell save. Of course, there's always cantrips. Guidance and resistance give you or someone else an extra 1d4 for skills and saves respectively. Spare the dying stabilizes a creature automatically. No more death saves. With that, we'll have hit all of our goals for this build, but we can keep going for sharper skills and sharper swords. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce damage from an attacker you can see by half as a reaction. This also increases your sneak attack damage to 3d6. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills. Insight and intimidation would be my choices. Arya gets kind of scary in the later seasons. 
Seventh level rogues get evasion, meaning they take half damage from failed deck saves and no damage from successful ones. Sneak attack also goes up to 46 here. Eighth level rogues get an ability score improvement and actually bump up one of your softer stats. Wisdom makes those spells you get harder to detect. Charisma works for your intimidation and deception skills. Ninth level assassins get infiltration expertise, which lets you create an alternate persona with 25 gold and a week of preparation. You can't be anyone specific, but the disguise is virtually undetectable, so as long as you don't mess it up by pulling a knife on someone, you're good. But if you really have to pull a knife, you deal an extra 5d6 sneak attack damage anyway. 10th level rogues get another ability score improvement. Might as well cap off your dexterity for better sneaking and better stabbing. 11th level rogues get reliable talent, meaning they can't roll anything lower than a 10 on skills with which they are proficient. With expertise on four of those skills, this will make you consistent with your stealth and unsavory social skills. Speaking of consistency, your sneak attack keeps increasing, now dealing an extra 66 damage. 12th level rogues get another ability score improvement. Bump up your wisdom for higher saves on your trickery spells. 13th level assassins get the imposter ability, which honestly is just a worse version of everything you got from the actor feed. At least your sneak attack increases to 76. Our capstone is rogue level 14, giving you blind sense, meaning that you can detect invisible and hidden creatures as long as you can hear. Useful in case someone steals your sight. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First things first, you have a plus 17 stealth modifier. Advantage on stealth, it can hide as a bonus Action. Pair this with the ability to critically hit any surprised foes, and you can start off combat with insane damage. After that round, you're still doing very consistent damage with extra attacks, duelist bonus, and likely sneak attack damage if you have another melee fighter in the party. Finally, your social skills aren't very nice, but they are very good. You can lie and scare people into finding out whatever you want, and have good insight to know if they're lying. As far as negatives go, you're not doing anything but poking, so if an enemy has dragon scales, you're not doing much. Your low intelligence modifier might also be an issue once you know where your target is, you're set, but with a negative one modifier, you might have issues hunting them down with investigation checks. Finally, you're not the nice girl your sister is. Intimidation and deception are great ways to get information, but it could make lasting relationships with sources problematic if they never want to talk to you again. But the world isn't nice, so why should you be? You've got a list and skills to cross names off of it. Find your enemies' weaknesses, exploit them, and send them to the many-faced god full of holes. Just be ready for a little loneliness as your regular party might be a little irregular. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video subscribe for more, I make new builds every week. After building Ari, I felt compelled to get some more lady killers in the mix. Vote for Katniss Everdeen, Lara Croft, or Rose Vitrosky. Be sure to swing back next week, we'll have another video on the web.